Okay. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, tough, heartbreaking loss on the road, hardest trip in our league. And uh, shucks, man, the things y'all, I know you understand. But uh, we lose three days of class on that trip for ESPN. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that every student athlete misses the same class three times, but we, we lose three days of class on that trip because it's, we had to leave early in the morning on Wednesday and we don't get back until, you know, crack of dawn on Friday, which, uh, anyhow, uh, good excuse. But uh, we, we actually handled the trip pretty well and uh, the biggest thing is, you know, getting up there in good fashion and, and you know, and uh, of course you have to stay in Memphis uh, normally. We have stayed at three other, at least three other places in Arkansas uh, to try to deal with this uh, this trip. Uh, there's not an airport closer than Memphis to this university. The, the players, I think we're ready to play. Our players, their players, uh, they uh, certainly were well coached and had a good plan. And, you know, we, we rose to the occasion for the most part and just couldn't quite overcome, uh, you know, four turnovers and not getting any turnovers and third down on defense and a few little uh, uh, problems in the kicking game. And so, you know, that's uh, called college football. And, uh, you know, I, I really uh, – I, I like this team. I, I think this team's got a chance to be good, you know. Uh, and if they, and I think they, and I, I heard Mark say a few things about it. Alluded to it a little bit about just trying to get better and and, uh, and more uh, sound assignment wise. And, you know, of course, on offense we've got to to what the way to eliminate turnovers is make sure that we got the front on the same page with the backs and picking up rush and blitz and protecting the quarterback and rushing the football. And, uh, you know, uh, with a young offensive line and young backs, sometimes that takes some time. Certainly Dion gives us some runs and and uh, we're getting some runs out of a couple of our backs. Uh, and uh, Corey's handling, he and Dion are handling the passing game and we, we've we been pretty good. Uh, we got to, we got to make sure that we don't uh, breakdown in, in the clutch as far as as far as protecting the QB and uh, uh, you know Corey's been in this game a long time and uh, you know uh, I know he understands that when we win he's gonna get a lot of credit and a lot of praise and we lose he's gonna get a vast amount of uh, uh, criticism and uh, and he'll be more closely scrutinized in a loss than he will in a in a win, so you know it's uh, part of the nature of the beast, so to speak. And uh, but uh, we got we got some clear cut things we got to do, and we we're, we're working on them in the in the meeting room today. Had a good team uh, time yesterday, and with our players, uh, we, uh, we came back in, and we, I think we lifted on Friday afternoon, uh, and then uh, gave them the day the. Friday and Saturday off and back to uh, a, a normal week Sunday last night. And uh, they're off today, which is good. That Maybe they'll get healed up, ready to go for three-game prep, three-day prep, excuse me. And um, looking forward to the trip, which will be somewhere maybe one-third as long as the trip to Jonesboro. <laughs> uh, but going to Mississippi State, uh, is, uh, you know, we've been there before. It's uh, a little bit easier to get to by bus, and, and we'll uh, look forward to the to the game. Questions? What does it say about your team that with the mistakes they had on Thursday, we're still able to stick in there so close? Well, I, I, you know, I think, <laughs> you know, that could that could swing either way. But, you, you know, uh, uh, I think I think we got guys that, that know – that certainly on offense we can move the football, hopefully on just about anybody and score. And uh, defense, I think we're gaining some confidence, but it's hard to gain confidence with, you know, 
with losses. And uh, but the, you know, the first two games, I think we got better and better as we went. And uh, and then this game, there, there's times we played really good, and uh, times when we broke down. And uh, I think the effort was there. Uh, I didn't see, and I, I, I came in Friday and watched the defensive tape with the defensive staff that you know a couple of our guys were recruiting, but uh, Coach Bolton and I and several more watched uh, and I saw a lot of effort. You know, we just got to make sure that we do a better job uh, of handling uh, the little things uh, in a defensive scheme that that uh, spell success or failure. And uh, uh, most of it's getting lined up and getting whatever checks there are and being as simple as we can be uh, and uh, letting players play the game. Well, we don't like for him to take sacks, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, he he might have rushed one. Uh, uh, you know, the cornerback made a great play on him uh, on the one, the first interception, as I remember it. Uh, not not the batted ball. The batted ball up in the air was something that will happen sometimes. And uh, uh, But the one, uh, their cornerback made a diving interception over on our sideline, so I had a good view of that one. The last one maybe we we uh, we uh, didn't didn't pick up blitz. I mean, you know, he's got three runners right at him. You know, and, you know, guys got to get rid of the ball. I don't know why he couldn't hold it much longer. But uh, you know, we got to we got to do a better job in that in that respect, uh, and we will. But uh, Corey's going to take his take his share of the blame, no no matter what. And and uh, you know, I, I think you know he'll. Uh, He'll, he'll be fine. I, I'm not worried about Corey. If I can get everybody else on the same page Corey's on, we're going to be darn good. And uh, So that's what we'll be working toward. You've been in these tough road SEC environments before. How do you get these guys prepared for that noise level? Just the physical no, level? No, noise will be good for us. You know, uh, I hope they're loud as they can ever been over there. Because we don't we, – noise doesn't really bother our offense. And, you know, that's what, normally what got the Cowbills – uh, sort of taken out of the, their hands supposedly before in, in the old days of the SEC, you know, and home games, they were really loud and people tried to take them away from them going in uh, visiting stadiums and that kind of stuff. It's, it's sort of a part of the Southeastern Conference lore, really, as, as far as the, uh, the noise. Uh, but noise doesn't really bother us uh, that much. Uh, I'm Sure, since I'm opening my mouth, that they'll they'll be the noisiest they've ever been in Starville, and they'll be fine. Uh, but uh, you know, the the thing that bothers me is those big <laughs> SEC football players we're going to have to line up against and and play and, uh, against a team that's really well coached football team, and they've had to play their number two quarterback, I guess, the last two games and against Auburn. I didn't, uh, you know, I've seen tape, but. The, to recognize that this young man is a backup coming in there doing the job he did against uh, Auburn certainly uh, makes you know that they're they're a pretty deep football team and uh, uh, their other the other quarterback is Russell right and he he was mighty good against us last year and uh, so you know we probably got to and Russell's a little different from from the guy the backup uh, help me with his name. Prescott, and uh, you know he's a big brawny runner, more so. Russell not afraid to run it, but but uh, he's more of a passer, I think. And uh, but but both of them are good players, uh, and uh, both of them obviously can can lead that offense. And, you know we got to be ready for whatever whoever they put out there. Talk about history in the state, uh, this Mississippi State. Obviously, a little bit of history. Bit one of the biggest wins in the program in Starkville. Talk a little about some of that. Well. <laughs> Well, we had a pretty good team, number one. <clears throat> you know, I look at some of those pictures and I see some pretty good, uh, pretty good guys. I think Osi was in that crowd. I think uh, Sheldon Felton was in that crowd. Davern Williams was in that crowd. I'm talking about defensive guy. Rayshon Reed was in that crowd. As a matter of fact, he intercepted one for six. Uh, Brock Nutter was in that crowd. He checked off to a little tall sweep to a guy named Demontre Carter. Uh, who, you know, they were in one of uh, 
my buddy's blitzes over there at uh, Mississippi State, and and uh, Brock Nutter recognized it, checked a weak sweep, and nobody home, and uh, Demontre took it to the house. So and uh, so you know, it, it's some good memories involved with that one. Uh, you know, I. I I don't even remember if I knew what a cell phone was. I think I had a cell phone or somebody on the bus had a cell phone, but we got tons of calls on the way home. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great win for our program uh, in a time of transition for the program and uh, because we, we weren't in a conference yet. And uh, the, the thing I always qualify that win with is we go there the next year, different, uh, different offense and uh, – I presume is a different offense. So, uh, but anyhow, I know it. We we had a few different players, and we turned it over six times, and uh, six times, and uh, lose it eleven to eight. So, you know, it's sort of like we were just talking about turnovers a while ago, right? They're not good. So, uh, I hope we can have a clean performance, play hard, and we go over there, and you know. Uh, it's always good to win no matter where you are. A corn patch or at Troy or in Starkville. <clears throat> does, the, does last year's performance here, do you think that's going to have an effect on the players this year about how close they're able to play against uh, Mississippi State last year? Well, you know, it'll have the same uh, performance, uh, have the same effect on both sides probably. You know, they, they no matter it could, you know, they, they say, well, you know, these guys, you know, had a chance to beat us over there last year. We better – Prepare well, you know, which is what it's all about. And, uh, so I hope it, I hope it uh, motivates our people. How key of a stretch is this as a football team sort of developing an identity against three some tough road games? As it'll help kind of count yeah. for the rest of the season. Well, I, I would have done it differently, but, you know, I wouldn't have played Art State early in the season if I had the choice, you know. You know, the, the, two, the perennial champion the last couple of years, uh, and always a pretty good team, you know. Uh, I would have played them later in the year, but uh, something we uh, is out of our control. I mean, we do the best we can do. Three game stretch on the road, don't like it, but it's part of uh, part of uh, uh, you know our obligation to the university and the athletic program to do such things. Uh, we will get Duke back here next year in a home and home situation. Mississippi State has at least come to Troy, the first SEC team ever to come to Troy. And uh, uh, so, you know, there's a, uh, you know, we, uh, and of course, the, the story with our State, now it's Mississippi State, and then it's going to be Duke. And then we come home for homecoming against a team that just beat Western Kentucky. So, they're no, they're no softy either, I'll tell you that. And, uh, I've always said they'll have an effect on this league. They, they just made their mark. And uh, so, anyhow.